Station, this is Sandy Hook Elementary. How do you hear me? Uh, Sandy Hook Elementary, we hear you loud and clear. Welcome to this International Space Station. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to Sandy Hook. We are so happy to be here with you today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to begin right with our questions. We're going to bring some great kids up here um, that are going to ask you some questions. My name is Austin, and this question is for Rick. How do you wash and brush your hair in space? Hey, that's a great question. How do we wash our hair? First of all, I don't have a whole lot of hair, so it's pretty easy. But basically, it's not unlike how you do it on the ground. We have a shampoo, and we wash it with a shampoo. But instead of rinsing it, because we don't have any running water, we just wipe it dry with a towel. It's called a no-rinse shampoo. <coughs> My name is Zach Bean. This question is for Steve. How do you sleep in the ISS? Sleeping on the ISS is very similar to camping. We have an area that's about the size of a tent, which is our little home we have, our little uh, room for us. And in there we have a sleeping bag. And that's where we sleep in a sleeping bag. And it's really a nice sleep. I, I feel very comfortable when I sleep. Rick, you too? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Caroline, and this question is for Rick. How do you move around the ISS with microgravity? Hey, that's a great question. It's a lot of fun to move around the space station. You know, we can, uh, we can do all kinds of things around here. We could flip upside down. We could flip right side up. We, you know, moving around the International Space Station is very easy because there's no gravity. So it's a lot of fun. You could fly around like you're Superman almost. <laughs> My name is Ryan, and this question is for Steve. Can you explain how the shower and toilet facilities work? Well, the shower, yes, it comes right here. It's basically a towel, which we put some hot water in. And after that, yeah, we just do, do a uh, normal uh, take of towel and wipe it all over your body, just like you would a sponge. So it's kind of like a sponge bath for us. As for the bathroom, that's a little bit different. The way I like to think about it, think of it as a vacuum hose sucking down, and that's where you got to aim. It's like I didn't hear the end of his question. Okay, go ahead, honey. My name is Aiden, and this question is for Rick. What kinds of preparations do you make for safety issues? For example, how would you put out a fire? Yeah, we train quite a bit for emergencies up here because a lot of things can go wrong. It's a, you know, it's a, space is a very dangerous place. We train for fires uh, when before we launch, we train to how to put out a fire. And of course, just like in your house or in any building on the on the planet Earth, they have we have fire extinguishers up here. So we would use those fire extinguishers, and we also have uh, gas masks or oxygen masks. If there's too much smoke, we put on those oxygen masks. And if the fire gets really bad and we have to leave the uh, space station, we have our Soyuz rescue ship that we get in the ship and we could fly home to safety. My name is Adam, and this question is for Steve. Do you have rules about how to get along and resolve conflicts? Who makes the rules and how are they enforced? Rick makes the uh, rules and and uh, and enforces them too uh, on this station, uh, but that uh, is not really all that we do. It happens to be more of a the golden rule of what we live by up here: uh, just do unto others as you'd have them do to you, and it works out quite well up here. My name is Hannah, and this question is for Rick. Can you show us any of your missions experiments? Yeah, we do a lot of experiments up here. One of the experiments we have a lot of fun with is called spheres. It's uh, basically a series of satellites. We have three little satellites like this. And these satellites, uh, the, uh, the scientists and the engineers down on the planet Earth are doing research to see how to control these satellites. These little guys, they fly around inside the space station. Someday they may be able to be fly around and kind of help us maybe carry our tools for us or maybe hold a camera for us. And then maybe someday little satellites like this can even fly around outside the space station. So we have a lot of fun with these little guys. 
My name is Ashley, and this question is for Steve. We heard you don't use cups, so can you show us how you drink liquids? That's a good question. Yes, I can. We drink liquids out of bags, and we have a straw for that bag. And the special thing about this straw, it has a, a piece of equipment on it that can stop the flow so you don't keep having water come out. Because if it would, uh, if we didn't have that on there, water would just keep coming out every time we grabbed the bag and we'd make a big mess. So it's a very important part of it. But we just drink out of a bag. My name is Jocelyn, and this question is for Rick. Can you show us how you eat food and how those items are packaged? Yeah, the food up here is there's several different types of food. Steve can demonstrate it for us. This is the uh, this is dehydrated food. So this is uh, what do we have? Uh, Noodles and chicken. So all the water and all the air has been taken out of the food, and it's just hard as a rock. And then what we'll do is we'll add the water back and we'll mush it around, and it'll be almost like good as new. The other type of, we, of food we have is kind of like the food they eat probably in the military. These are uh, it's thermal stabilized irradiated food. So it's basically food in an envelope. We put it in a little heater, we warm it up, we open it up, and we eat it. And then, of course, we have food in a natural form, like we have cookies and uh, granola bars and things like that to eat also. My name is Ben, and this question is for Steve. How do you manage your trash? Oh, man, it's trash. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, we have a couple different type of trash bags. We have one over here Rick's going to show us. We call this for our normal, like, uh, dry trash, things that aren't going to be wet and stinky. And that's what we put in this trash bag. And then we have another one, which is smaller, but more of it can seal up, and that's what we use for the wet and stinky trash. And then all that goes into a big bag, which we then put in one of the cargo vehicles that's going back down that doesn't take anything precious because it's going to burn up on the way in. And so that's we put all our trash in there and it just burns up on the way back and uh, it's a recycled in that way my name is Sancho and this question is for like, we read that each astronaut has to keep the packed personal items to a maximum of two pounds what kinds of personal items did you bring with you on this trip Yeah, that's a good question. You're, that's exactly right. We don't have our, the spaceship that we come up with, the rocket ship, every ounce or every pound is very, very expensive to launch into orbit. So we only are allowed very few personal items. Of course, I got pictures of my family. I've got some, uh, I've got, you know, my watch. I've got my, uh, a ring for my wife. I've got little pieces of jewelry for friends and family. Of course, we have a few items. Like, for example, we have this school T-shirt from uh, Sandy Hook School that we're able to bring up, and we'll, we'll return to you guys when we get home. So we get to bring a few personal items up here, things like that. My name is Aaliyah, and this question is for Steve. What was your inspiration to become an astronaut, and what kind of training did you need? Oh, for me, my inspiration uh, happens to be probably Star Trek. I used to watch that as a kid all the time, and uh, I just fell in love with space at that time. Uh, for what you have to do to become an astronaut, that's uh, mostly working hard in school. Just doing uh, what your parents tell you to do, work hard, get good grades, and uh, just be the best person you can be. My name is Lauren, and this question is for Rick. Are there any pets aboard the ISS? Well, we don't have any pets, but we do have visitors on occasion. <laughs> like, uh, Macy, was it two months ago, we had a colony of ants come up here. And it was actually a research project in part and also an educational event. And students around the country and around the world where we were videotaping these ants as we released them into a bigger and bigger area. Of course, they were in a container, a container and they couldn't get out. But we released them into a bigger and bigger areas. And these ants would go out and forage. And we were kind of studying how does the ant forage in a, a weightless environment compared to how he forages on, a, you know, on the earth with gravity. Um, so we don't really have any pets. But every once in a while, we do get a, a visitor of some kind as part of an experiment. My name is Sam, and this question is for Steve. How long does it take to put on the spacesuit? 
Hey, how long does it put on a spacesuit? That's a good question. It isn't very easy just to go out the door. It takes uh, a few hours in total to put the whole thing all on and ready to go. But actually, just the spacesuit itself is a little less than an hour, but because you have to put on uh, a long underwear, then a thermal garment, and then the suit itself, it comes in the pants and the top part and the helmet and the gloves, and you have to make sure it's all sealed up just perfectly before you go out the door. My name is Sammy, and this question is for Steve. What do you do for entertainment? Can you watch movies or play games? Well, for entertainment, yes, uh, we do watch some movies and some TV up here. They get recorded, and we get them shipped up to us, and that's very nice to help us uh, kind of relax up here. Uh, people, some do read books, some, and the, I guess that's good to do, but uh, I think my favorite pastime is looking out the window. My name is Chris, and this question is for Rick. What type of equipment is needed for a spacewalk besides the spacesuit? Okay, so the probably the piece of equipment that we use the most is this called a PGT. It's basically a drill driver. You've seen them at uh, you know Home Depot. You probably got them in your house, and you've seen them all over the place. Basically, to to uh, to tighten bolts. And this tool right here is the tool that we use to actually to build the International Space Station. But the other thing you got to think of is up here in a weightless environment, things float away all the time. So we have to tether everything. So this tether right here is kind of like, uh, you know, when you take your dog for a walk on a leash, it's a retractable tether. It's very similar to that. So if, uh, if the tool kind of flies away, it comes right back to you every time. So it's very important not to lose our tools up here because, you know, we just can't go to Home Depot and buy a new one all, all the time. My name is Lily, and this is a question for Rick. What do you do about first aid? Is there a first aid station? First aid on space station, that's a good question, yeah. Actually, every one of us is trained as a first aid responder, and even more than that, we have a lot of training in how to take care of each other. If there's an emergency of some kind, if somebody is choking, or if somebody hurts themselves or cuts themselves, and we have all kinds of medical equipment up here. We have bags of medical equipment, and we're trained how to use it. But the most important thing is we have a doctor in, uh, in Houston in the mission control room. There's a doctor sitting there almost all the time, and if we have a question or if we don't feel good, we can call up the doctor and ask him uh, you know, for some help, and he'll help us uh, basically like calling him on the phone, and he'll tell us what to do. Go ahead. My name is Jake, and this question is for Steve. What do you do, or where do you go to get some private time and space, and do you have a favorite place in the ISS? Oh, private time. I guess that would be my little uh, tent area where we, where we sleep. That's our kind of little, our room. It's We keep it with, I say, our pictures on it uh, of our family and just as what we get to do of where we can be alone on station. Besides that, sometimes you can, it's big enough on station, you can find a module to be by yourself if you want to. And hopefully sometimes you get to even look out the window by yourself. That's kind of a nice feeling to kind of uh, uh, reflect on things at that time. My name is Sophia, and this question is for Rick. Is there a universal language spoken on the ISS? Yes, the universal language, or the language that all the international partners, because right now we have Russian cosmonauts up here, we have a Japanese astronaut, and then we got Steve and I from uh, the United States. So we've got three different countries represented right here, but we also have many folks from Europe. We have Canadians, and of course... Uh, you know, the Europeans speak all different languages over there, but basically the agreed upon language is English. So most everyone speaks English very, very well. And then, of course, since we're flying up on a Russian vehicle to get to the space station, Steve and I had to learn Russian to fly in the Russian vehicle. So but mostly English and Russian are spoken up here. Hi, my name is Isaiah. And this question is for Steve. What is the power source of the space station, and is it an autopilot, or does an astronaut have to fly it? That's a good question, really, yes. An astronaut does not fly it. It's mostly it has like an autopilot system, I would say. Uh, but the ground, the mission control team, takes care of that for us. They make sure it's uh, working properly and we're going in the right direction. And if we do have to do a maneuver, they also set that up for us, and they can control it from the ground. How do you brush your teeth? 
Yeah, brushing our teeth is basically not much different than what you do. You know, we have a toothbrush, we have a toothpaste. The big difference is, is we don't have a sink. You know, we don't have running water down here. So what I'll do is I'll brush my teeth and I'll just spit the toothpaste into a tissue and put it into the wet trash. Uh, so that way, you know, we don't have a sink. So that's basically the best way that I've come up with for brushing our teeth up here. What sort of exercises do you do? Oh, exercise, that's a good one. We have a bicycle, a treadmill, and we also have a resistive exercise device, which means it's kind of like lifting weights, because you really can't lift weights here because then things don't float, or things float, they don't weigh anything. So we have to have come up with a device that was just like lifting weights, and our engineers did that, and it's a very good device. So we, we kind of lift weights, we run, and we bike. Okay, Kat. <laughs> Uh, we would like to thank you for taking this time to be with us. And as a special treat, we would like to sing our school song for you um, before we conclude um, today's event. And again, we can't thank you enough for taking the time and teaching us about space. Well, you're very welcome. We look forward to the song. Well, thank you very much. You guys sound fantastic. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Everybody say goodbye. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.